So the types of equipment you need, there's a whole gamut of things you might need. The most important thing is your bicycle. There are touring bikes you can buy from a variety of companies and they are uh, built a certain way for touring. Some people like myself have converted an old mountain bike because I've gone on some trips so I know I'd beat the hell out of my bike. <laughs> One thing about your bicycle is get the best bike you can afford because you're on the road, you're relying on your bicycle as transportation and the better quality bicycle you have, uh, the less maintainability it's going to have, less problems it's going to have and it's going to take care of you on your long trips. Um, most important thing is to take them for a test drive, make sure you get the right fit and all the other gear you might need in terms of, uh, you know, um, touring tires and panniers and if you're going to be camping a sleeping bag or a tent or a pot and stove and all the ancillary gear you might need I would get the best you can afford to because you're on the road you don't want any breakdowns or any failures in your gear because there's nothing worse than beyond the middle of nowhere and your gear fails you know what are you going to do so get the best stuff you can afford because it'll take care of you in the long run and it'll last uh, you know it'll last uh, quite a bit longer than if you uh, buy something cheaper. It's all about quality and it's an investment so you know treat it as an investment. There's plenty of information out there and all that stuff and um, the best thing to do is wait for some things to go on sale and save your money but it's all about safety, comfort, reliability and um, maintainability so you know I've all my travels I think all my travels in the United States I've probably ridden on my bike towards five six thousand miles I've had uh, one flat tire because I got good quality tires and that's pretty hard for people to believe that I've never had more than a flat tire because I have really good quality gear and then I have a good mechanic at home too who takes care of my stuff when I get back. It's not that difficult to fly your bike. It's maybe more of a, uh, more of a hassle, I guess. Um, you need a bike box generally and so you have to break your bike down to fit in a box and that requires removing the wheels and the handlebars and all that and so um, um, you know doing that in your home is easy to do it can be kind of a hassle at the end at the airport where you have to put your bike together in the airport or at the bus station or at the post office where you maybe you shipped your bike to but you just have to have some tools and you know a little time Give yourself a couple hours to put that together. It's not that it's not that big a deal. Just build that into your plan. You know, that's part of your plan. Getting there, you know, getting your your bike, put it back together. As far as carrying on an airplane, some airlines are better than other airlines in terms of um, bike transportation. There's a couple airlines that charge very little, and but most airlines charge a lot to ship your bicycle as as a as baggage, and the expensive airlines the charge can be as much as your airplane ticket so the deal is to find those uh, less expensive airlines basically frontier airlines and southwest airlines they have a pretty good rate on carrying your your bike box the best thing to do is check with the airlines websites and see what their rules and regs are for um, transporting your bicycle uh, if you take the train it's pretty cheap to take it on the train it's just you know 15 bucks Bus lines, you can take on a bus line, toss it underneath the, you know, the cargo section. They generally don't charge too much, but once again, you need to call them or check their websites. They can give you the rundown on their, on their uh, policies on this.